Ooh, this current starts ready. Hopefully it gives you hints of why the voltage across the two resistor doesn't happen to be the same. You can when you have resistors in series across a battery, we find that the voltage across it is not the same, but the current everywhere stays the same. Why does that happen? It's as if the circuit is conspiring for some reason to keep the current same, and that's why keeping the voltage different, but why? How does it do that? How does it actually put the voltage? That's the question that you asked me. That's the question we're gonna answer. And to answer this question, we're gonna look at a moment. A moment just after closing the circuit. That moment lasts for a few milliseconds. But this is the moment during which the current is not the same everywhere, the voltage is not yet formed, things are still chaotic, the circuit is still trying to figure out what to do. It's a very complicated moment. This is the moment that's completely skipped in your syllabus, it's completely skipped in your curriculum, but it's this moment that has all the secrets to unlock the mysteries that we're trying to solve. And therefore, this entire video will be dedicated to this very, very small moment that, that occurs just after closing the circuit. And that small moment, which lasts for a few milliseconds, we give it a name, we call it the transient stage or the transients. So let's look at the transient stage in this entire, entire video. So we have just closed the switch, we have closed our circuit, and let's slow down time. What's gonna happen? Well, we have electrons everywhere, and these electrons have not yet started moving. We have yet to have a current, we have yet to have a voltage. What's gonna happen to these electrons? Well, the battery is gonna start pulling and pushing on them. The negative charge is gonna push on the electrons, the positive charge is going to pull on the electrons. So there'll be a force that every single electron will feel due to the battery. And all these forces are pretty much the same right now. The battery is not conspiring to do anything, the battery doesn't care where the resistors are, the forces are the same. What's gonna happen because of that? Well now the electrons will start moving and we're gonna have a current. If you look at this section of the wire with no resistance, the electrons are gonna go very, very high speed. And therefore, we're gonna have very, very high current. So we'll have huge current in these sections of the wire which have no resistance. I'm gonna draw thick wires, thick lines of current for that. What about this section of the wire which has some resistance? Well, electrons are gonna go a little slower, they're gonna find it a little harder to go, and therefore the current over here will be smaller, and I'm gonna draw a little thinner direction, a little thin arrow mark. And what about this section of the wire? It has the maximum current, and so the electrons find it very hard to flow through, and therefore it'll have the least current. So we'll have very tiny current, but draw very tiny. And at this moment, right in front of your eyes, you can see in the transient stage, the current is not the same everywhere. This is the stage where the electrons are experiencing the same force as of now, but the current is not the same. And eventually, later on, by the time you open your textbooks, <laughs> when the circuit has settled down, we will go from this stage to a stage where the current stays the same, but you will find that the forces on the electrons are different. And so the whole idea is to see how we go from here to there automatically. How does it happen? Okay, to see how that happens, we need to look at the ends of the resistor. That's where things are interesting because that's where the current changes, right? So let's look at the ends of this resistor. If I focus on this end, you can see electrons are coming in at very high speeds. A lot of electrons will be coming in per second, but the electrons going out of this point into this resistor will be less per second. What's gonna happen because of that? Because of that, you will have traffic jam you'll have electrons getting accumulated over here. Imagine you have 10 electrons coming in per second and only two electrons going out per second. Eight electrons will get accumulated, right? So you have electrons accumulated, which means you have negative charges accumulated. Let's draw that. So here are our negative charges getting accumulated. And similarly, what's gonna happen here, you have electrons going out of this point very quickly, but you have less electrons coming into that point and therefore the opposite effect is going to happen. It will be deficient of electrons and therefore you'll have positive charge on this end. So you have charge accumulation happening at the ends of the resistor. The same thing's gonna happen over here as well, but my question to you is, do you think the charges accumulated over here would be more than what we get over here, less, or it's gonna be the same? What do you think? 
Well, because the difference in the current is much higher here than over here, the effect is amplified. So if I look at over here, you have a lot more electrons flowing in per second and a lot less electrons flowing out. And therefore, you'll have a lot more charges accumulated, a lot more negative charges being formed, okay, per second. Any given moment in time, you'll have a lot more charges accumulated. I'm gonna draw so many so that we can clearly see the difference between these two. And right at this moment, hopefully it gives you hints of why the voltage across the two resistor doesn't happen to be the same. You can sort of see why the voltage across the bigger resistor starts becoming more than the voltage across this resistor. Can you see that? But anyways, we're getting ahead of ourselves. It's just hint, That's, we still not solved anything. The question now is what's going to happen because of these accumulated charges? These are gonna have a huge role to play. They're gonna have a very important role in what happens next. What are they gonna do? How are they gonna affect our circuit? Well, see, so far, the electrons were experiencing a force, the, the force, only due to the battery, right? But now these charges are also going to start influencing these electrons. They're also going to start pulling and pushing on them. As a result, the forces will change. As a result, the current will start changing. How will it change? Let's look at each section of the wire. If I look at this section of the wire, notice the electrons are running into negative charges. The negative charge is going to repel it, it's gonna push away from it. So what's gonna to happen to this force? That is going to be smaller. So this force will be smaller. I'm gonna draw a smaller force. What happens to this one? Notice, electrons are moving away from the positive charge. The positive charge is gonna pull it back, which means again, the net force is gonna be smaller. This force is also gonna be smaller. The same thing's gonna happen over here as well. The forces in this reduce. The same thing happens here. So what happens to these currents? Ooh, this current starts reducing. This current over here starts reducing. I'm gonna draw a smaller arrow mark. Or let me just write reduce, reduce. Current reduce current reduce. So these currents are gonna start reducing. What happens to the current in the resistor? Well, for that, let's look at the forces in the resistor. What's gonna happen? Well, if I look over here, notice this electron is being pushed away uh, by the negative charge and pulled towards the positive charge, which means the electron is going to experience more force. The forces are gonna add up. Can you see that? As a result, as a result, this force is gonna be larger. The force on the electrons over here adds up due to the accumulated charges. What's gonna happen here? The same effect, but even more magnified. Even more magnified. You, the electrons are going to be repelled are going to be attracted, and so the force due to the charges is gonna add up to this force, and therefore, this force, I'm gonna draw that over here now so that I can draw a big arrow mark, okay. That force is gonna get amplified, so it's gonna experience even more force inside the resistor. And as a result, what happens to these currents? Oh, that current is going to increase. So this current is going to increase and this current is going to increase, and the stage is set. A couple of things are gonna happen. First, you see the high currents are becoming lower, and the low currents are becoming higher. But there's a second thing which is a slightly subtle. Even though that's happening, as long as the currents here stay higher than the currents here, the charge accumulation continues to happen which means as time passes by, the effect only gets amplified. The current over here reduces even further, even more quickly. The currents over here is going to increase even more quickly. 
So not only are these current levels coming closer to each other, but as time passes by, because the charge accumulation increases, the current levels are coming closer to each other quicker and quicker. And that gives you some insights into why the transients only last for a very small moment. This is happening super fast. In milliseconds, this all happens. And now we can answer our questions. What causes the voltage across the resistors in the first place? How does the battery put voltage? Notice the battery doesn't put any voltage. It doesn't transfer any voltage at all. The voltage across the resistor is set up due to the charges accumulated due to the differences in the current. That's how the voltages are set up over here. And because bigger resistors have more charges accumulated across its ends, because there's more current difference, automatically you end up with more voltage. Why do we say there is more voltage? Because these accumulated charges are pushing more on the electrons, transferring more energy into the electrons, and therefore we say there is a higher voltage across this resistor, whereas there is lower voltage across the smaller resistor. You see that? Do you see how it automatically happens? If this resistor is, let's say, four times as big as this resistor, the charge accumulated will also be four times as big as this resistor, and therefore the push that we'll get over here will be, due to the charges, will be four times as much as what we get over here, and therefore the voltage across this will also be four times as much as the voltage across over here. That's why the voltage splits in ratio of what the resistances are. Okay, so we have voltages that are rising inside the resistor. We have voltage over here, four times as much the voltage over here. We have the currents trying to equalize. When is it all going to stop? Well, eventually there comes a point when the current here in this section of the wire exactly equals the current in the resistor. Why would that happen? Because until that happens, charges will keep on getting accumulated and forcing this current to increase, forcing the current to reduce. So eventually, that situation must happen. If one thing is reducing and another thing is increasing continuously, eventually, at some point in time, they must equalize, right? So that moment has arrived. The current now has equalized everywhere. When the current is equalized, when the current is the same throughout the circuit, we will find that the forces over here are very high, much higher in the bigger resistor compared to the smaller resistor, and the forces inside the wire is almost zero. In fact, if this is a perfectly resistance-less wire, we would have zero force. And the reason for zero force is because if there is any force, the electrons will accelerate to insanely high speeds. And again, the current would be very high. Again, the charge accumulation would happen and it will not allow that. So until the forces are completely canceled out in this wire, the charge accumulation continues to happen. But once the forces are all canceled out, the current has equalized, the forces over here have disappeared. Only forces exist inside the resistor. And now the charge accumulation stops. It no longer continues. I didn't say the accumulated charges disappear. Of course they're there. They're the ones that are providing the voltage, but it doesn't continue to increase anymore. They stay wherever they are. The transients are gone. The transients is done. We have now reached the things that you see in your textbook. We have reached the steady state. And in the steady state, we have the same current. We have different voltages. We have, if you, this resistance is four times as big as this resistance, we have four times as much voltage in this compared to this. And therefore, the voltage of the battery gets split in the ratio four is to one. What I find fascinating is that it's the chaotic moments, the transients that last for a few milliseconds, which is mostly ignored, it's these transients that hold the key to understanding how the voltage at the current gets set up in a circuit. Let me know in the comments what other mysteries should we be diving into next. Until then, see you.